Hello, I am Rich Fox at RG Fox on Twitter, and I help build an open source project called Propeller Kit. My topic is generic table controllers with Propeller Kit. And you're probably wondering, what is Propeller Kit? Uh, before I give you uh, an explanation of what Propeller Kit, Kit is, let me give you a little bit of a background and how we got came to build that. Uh, so at Propeller, we are a little bit different from uh, a lot of companies in that a lot of companies will work on one app for many years, the same code base. At Propeller, we end up working and starting a lot of projects over that same time frame. So what Propeller, what Propeller Kit is, is a, a template for going and creating a new application. Uh, it gives you all the, it lets you get up and running quickly by giving you networking and a lot of other things. Um, and actually it's, it's not just one framework itself, it's kind of the glue for all of these frameworks, which are Propeller Network, which is an, uh, a networking framework that is inspired by Chris Einhoff's Swift Talks uh, on networking, um, Propeller Promise, which is a uh, lightweight promise framework, JSON Codable, which is a JSON encoding and decoding framework by Matthew Tioke, and Propeller Controller, which is a framework for configuring table views with generic controllers, which is what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, so to give you some reasons why Propeller Controller might be worth using um, before we jump into how to use it, um, it lets you more quickly configure your table views by abstracting a lot of logic away, which in turn will <clears throat> allow you to write less boilerplate and have cleaner code. It makes it easier to separate the logic from your view controller, and it makes it easy to configure multiple cell types for a single table view. And so how did I, we get to this propeller controller and doing generic table controllers? Uh, well, of course, at some point, we implemented a table view just on a view controller. Um, making it conform to UI table view data source and delegate uh, and the number of row and sections. But of course, uh, the good programmers that we are, we don't want to put everything in the view controller, so we strive to abstract away as much as we can. So uh, we had the thought, of course, let's try to put it in its own controller, um, which can be nice and abstract out a lot, but then what happens if we want to do something similar somewhere else, another t table view and another uh, part of the app. Uh, well, it's gonna look a lot, very similar. We make another controller for that and it has most of the same code, maybe a different data source, different cell type. Um, but then, how can we make that better? Of course with generics, right? So uh, in propeller controller, this is, uh, cl uh, definition for a class in propeller controller. So we, we use general table controller that has two associated types, cell type and data type. And cell type, it requires uh, inheriting from UI table view cell, so we can treat it like a cell in, in our class implementation. Um, and then we take care of implementing all the UI table view data source and delegate methods and, and give you uh, a closure representing each of those so you, you can just configure from the closure. And so here's a, an example of configuring a table view controller with propeller controller. Uh, first we, t we can type alias the uh, definition of the class with its types into just name table type, and then we create the controller, 
we set the table on the controller, set the data source, and then we just do dot will display cell and configure the function for will display cell. Um, but then, after we've written this, where do we put it? Um, well, of course we wanna abstract it as far away out as we can, so uh, what I like to do is put it in a struct, maybe called table controller, and then put on a static var, and then put all of my configured controllers in this same struct. So they're all in the same place. And so how do we get to multiple cell types? So to do multi-cell types, we do two things. First, we tell the controller when to use which cell type. And we do that by implementing cell type for index data. Uh, and so this function just give us, gives us a data and index path intersection, and then we return a stringified version of the cell type we want to use at that intersection. And uh, I'm just using an extension type identifier on UI table view cell that stringifies the type. And then it's a simple case matter of just using this uh, function, cell of type. And so on, this is the, the same code as before, controller that will display for the first cell. And then for the second cell, we just call on the controller uh, dot of cell and our new type. And then on that, we can do dot will display cell and implement for that cell. And then we can do it for a third cell type also, or as many as we want. We can do the same cell type again and call a different uh, closure on it. And then what's it doing underneath? So underneath, uh, we have to create a protocol that represents that generic table controller so that we don't have to worry about its associated generic types. And we do that with this protocol, table controllable, which is a class protocol because our, our controller is always classes and it requires conformance to UI table view delegate and data source and has one other requirement which is data source any. And that is so we can type erase the type for the controller and not have to worry about types again and I'll go into detail in the next slide on that. And then uh, that dot of cell type basically creates a child of the current controller um, that is a duplicate of that controller except it ha the only difference is that the cell type is different. And uh, we put that in, store that in subcontrollers on the parent uh, under the key that is the stringified version of the cell type. And then the child can reference the parent from parent controller. And so the data source any, like I said, was just a way to a type erase so we wouldn't have to worry about different types on the data source. But uh, so we can just erase it like this. But then on the child, since the child, I, like I said before, was a duplicate of the parent, uh, we know that the data type will be the same because only the cell type is different. So we can just cast it back to the same type of the child. And then it's just a simple matter of uh, getting the identifier from cell type for index data and passing the identifier in the subcontroller uh, dictionary to get the child controller. And then we can call any uh, matching UI table view delegate or data source function on it because if you recall the table view table controllable protocol conforms to both of those and so this is what it looks like inside the implementation this is the function route this function route table controller again gets the identifier from cell type for index data and passes it in, into subcontrollers to get the child control controller. And then here's the implementation for cell for row and index path. Uh, it uses that route table controller to find the child. If a child is found, then it 
calls the matching table, uh, the matching function self a row at index path. Otherwise, if it's if it's not found, then we know the it, then it would return nil, and we know that the uh, the cell type is of the current controller. So we can just go and use it normally and get this, create the cell and pass it into cell loaded. For will display, uh, in, since we are getting the cell inside the uh, definition of this function, uh, we just check to, if, to see if we can cast it to the current cell type of the controller. Uh, and if we can, then we know that we're in the right controller, so we just go the normal route and call will display cell. Uh, otherwise, then we get the identifier, pass into the subcontrollers, and call, again, the same function on that subcontroller, which is will display cell. And so uh, I would like to give you a quick live coding example of implementing this with pro propeller kit. So we have these two cells, uh, Pokemon Short and Pokemon Cell. I'm using a maybe familiar uh, example API that you may have seen in other presentations that will just give me a list of Pokemon. And then for this table, So we'll do static var pokey list, and it will take do a table view and return. And I've already type alias the generic table controller type that I want. Table. And then so we can create the controller. Set the table view. Set the row height. And then we'll display cell function. Cell data, and then we don't need the index path. And then cell dot label dot text equals data dot name. Okay, and then, and then we'll add it to our view controller. We'll use a lazy var, just make it table controller. Return. one we just created, which is pokey list, I believe. Yes. Self dot table view. And source kit is being nice to me right now, but I think it's okay, there we go. And then when we fetch the Pokemon, we'll pass it into the table controller. Set data source. We haven't set the data source. Uh, to list. And then, if I've done everything right, we should get
Ooh, I think we have a network issue. Uh, I should listen to you. There we go. And so we have one cell configured. Try for a second one. So now we just do of cell. Uh, We'll display cell equals cell dot short name label. And then we have to tell the controller which, when to use which and uh, We'll do is we'll use cell type for next data. And so we'll do it when uh, the name is seven characters or less do the lar uh, larger cell. Oh, return. And there you go. Uh, we can configure two different cell types on the same table view controller, table controller. Um, and so, Thank you. Uh, I'm RG Fox on Twitter. I also want to thank Roy McKenzie, who's here also, who did a lot of work on Propeller Kit and uh, especially on Propeller Network for this. And thank also Propeller for giving us the time and resources f to build this cool open source project. So it's on GitHub. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. <laughs>